Hello and welcome to another episode of Selling Tri-Cities, where we are selling more than homes with your co-host Greg Peckman and Aubrey <laughs> Tellerico. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, today. We are going to be actually talking a little bit about the market. Yes. Um, there's a lot of questions about uh, kind of like what's going on, mm -hmm. what to expect uh, over the next few weeks and next few months. Um, and so Greg is here to kind of give us some insight um, as far as what he is seeing and some, some mm -hmm. cool trends. Cool. I appreciate it. And what better way to lead into it? Uh, having a couple of beers that we're talking here. We're at John City Brewing. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. episode is sponsored. I know there's like a running <laughs> theme every time we talk about real estate on this. There's some type of yes. beverage. Uh, but, you know, when you're in real estate, sometimes you just need a beverage. <laughs> real estate mortgages, you need yes. beverages. Absolutely to survive yeah so let's just talk about in this is something like we've talked about before inventory right yeah so inventory just give you some numbers here rough numbers you have like nine hundred thousand homes for sale across the country right but that's not yeah. the, the real number you actually have 400 of you know four hundred thousand of that on the contract already so you have a half a million homes on the market that's it across the whole u.s right now okay Crazy. compare that back to 2012 2013 where we had about two million homes yeah. on the market right and during that two million homes in the market, you had eight percent appreciation. Just think about that. So if, if somebody's sitting on the fence right now and say, "Oh, I'm going to wait for rates to come down," which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, yes. you know, and this and that. Well, think about when rates do come down, and they will come down here in the second and third quarter a little bit. Uh, and yeah, inventory it's, just yes, and then so now you got people flooding into the market. It's going to drive up the prices even more. So if you're still sitting on the fence or anything else, you got to think about that. Don't just think about the rate, rate, rate. You got to think mm -hmm. about hey, the whole picture of wealth impact. Yeah. And if I just sit back and, and wait, that's going to affect you. Yeah. You know, negatively, right? Yeah, I have people actually just like two days ago. Somebody sent me. He's not in real estate, but um, you know, obviously a friend of mine, and they sent me a just a funny meme of somebody somebody did like waiting for that market to crash like the bubble that everybody said was going to pop and the crash and it was just a funny mean on like how that wasn't going to happen yes. um and how there are still some buyers who for yeah. two two and a half three years have been sitting there waiting they've lost all these opportunities yeah. and they've lost out on a lot of money because they didn't buy then and let their home appreciate with the time um, and so now that home they could have bought has cost them more money. Yep. They've lost the appreciation they could have gained. Um, and so there's a lot of people, I think, who are kind of kicking themselves in the tush because yep. um, they kept waiting for that and we're just not yeah, seeing that. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a hot button with me too because it's very frustrating because you can't compare now compared to 2007, 8, and 9. So let's give you some more stats. During that time, you had 4 million homes for sale. Four million. You have a <laughs> half a million now. Yeah. And number two is back then you could just fog a mirror and still get a mortgage. Now, yeah. the last decade, you've had the best mortgages inside Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac from people because you, you actually have to qualify. What a novel idea that is. But <laughs> but anyway, that's, I mean, so those two things, if you're still waiting on that, you're going to be waiting more because we're, we're going to be in this supply and demand issue mm -hmm. probably, probably for the next two or three years at least because building, here's something else. Each decade, guys, um, you had building, you know, from 1980 to 2010. Each one of those decades, you had about 25 million homes being built. Now, from 2010 to 2020, you only had 7 million. Yeah. Under 7 million, actually. So, think, I mean, so all that stuff takes time to get into the marketplace. The building doesn't happen overnight. Then we had the, the uh, supply issues for the last, you know, a couple of years ago and, and all that stuff. So, uh, we're going to be here for a while. Yeah. And so if you're still hesitating in this and that, it's not going to go that way. You know, it's not going to crash is, is my point. And I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of people who they find the perfect house. <laughs> I mean, as well, they find the perfect house that checks all their boxes, but they're hesitant over, you know, $50 a month or like, yep. you know, the rates are going to come down. But what happens is now they sit there for six months, nine months, 12 months, and now yep. they're stuck, you know, renting or not investing in the home that was best for their family. Like they yeah. needed to, they needed to upsize. And now they've spent the last year, yeah. year and a half crammed in a home, not as happy because they feel stressed. Yeah. Um, and they were worried about, they let the, they let their home pass them by because yeah. they were worried about a rate. And guys, here's the thing, rates go up and rates go down. It's fact, it's history, it happens. So they might be a little bit higher now than, than what they have been in the past but they will go down. So the chance to refi will be there. It will happen. Um, but don't let that home that checks all of your boxes, don't let that pass you by because you might not find that other house. The rate you can change, but that yeah. house might not come, come back up again. Um, and so I think that's you know a really big thing too. So let's talk about where you feel like 
rates might be sure. going. Sure. So, you know, we talk about May 10th being a big date. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically that date is just the CPI index, which is the index when, when you're dealing with cost of, of goods and all that stuff. That's all going to finally catch up um, because the, the, the shelter costs, you know, cost of renting, you know, things that cost inside shelter is starting to taper off, but it's a lagging index. So they figure by May 10th, which is shown April of the previous month, it's finally going to catch up and it's going to show that inflation has slowed down. And basically, when inflation slows down, that helps interest rates. When inflation goes up, that hurts you know, um, interest rates. So it's the arch enemy, always mm-hmm. has been when mm-hmm. it comes to mortgage rates. So uh, right now, you know, I think the Fed is jumping the gun too much, talking about like another rate hike and everything else. And, and rate hikes, just so everybody knows, that affects short-term interest rates. That's yeah. bank-to-bank lending. That affects HELOCs, uh, credit cards, everything else. It yeah. actually helps long-term rates, which is mortgage rates. Mm-hmm. So. So, you know, May 10th is hopefully the day where, you know, the, the, all the data finally catches up the year over year. You can finally see it. And eventually, like, like the shelter costs are here, right? And so it's lagging here. So eventually it's going to start coming down like that. So uh, we're all hoping and, you know, no guarantees. I have the full disclaimer on that. But just from all the stats and from history, rates will start trickling down to the low fives. Okay. Yeah. That's what we're hoping for. It doesn't happen overnight. It might come down, might bounce back up, and this and that. So hopefully over the late second quarter, third quarter, we're going to start seeing uh, rates start trickling down. Yeah, so. and low fives are wonderful. I know people yeah. are still... In a 2% um, world, yeah. Yeah, and they're 2 and 3% world. That's yeah. just not where where it should have ever been. Yeah. Um, so uh, fives are, are a steal, um, obviously, if, you, if yeah. they do come down that. But I think the cost of waiting right now is what people really need to focus on. Yes. Um, and if you have concerns or questions about that, you need to reach out to Greg and you know reach out to the people who know what they're talking about and let them show you what that cost of waiting looks like. Yeah. Let them show you the, the diagram and the graphs as far as you know what your price point is with interest rates are. And they can actually walk you through what what that would look like for you. Um, and I think numbers and seeing it on paper, seeing it on a computer, um, yeah. really makes a big difference. Well, too. I mean, it's something something that you just brought up, the cost of waiting. Because most people don't even calculate that into your thinking. And that cost of waiting could be, it's a lot more expensive than the cost of the interest rate being a half a point higher or a point higher and everything else. When you sit back and you wait, you're, you're losing the appreciation, like you said before. You're losing getting into a house and start paying down that mortgage. So you, you're building equity both ways that way. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about crazy appreciation like we had in 2007 or eight. I'm just talking about normal appreciation. You know, let's say 3 or 4%. You know, when somebody's paying rent, you're paying somebody else's mortgage. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, don't just look at payment towards payment. I get that. That's important to your budget. But you got to look at the whole picture of what you're giving up by waiting. So. Yeah. I mean, you're getting zero equity when you're renting. Yeah. Um, like you said, you're paying somebody else's mortgage, so it'd be nice, you know, to, to pay your own mortgage. We understand that sometimes it's not possible sure. for everybody, and there's a game plan that people have, um, but it's still important to get with a lender and get with somebody who can help, you know, set up um, a plan for you and, mm-hmm. and set that, get you started on the right track, whether it's increasing your credit mm-hmm. score to get to where you can um, you can invest, you can buy, um, but get with somebody so that you actually have all the answers. Don't turn on CNN or Fox News or any of those, whatever. Get with somebody who they can actually show you and walk you through what those numbers look like um, and get you on the right track um, because investing in real estate will always be yeah. a smart decision, always. Yeah, I mean, when, when people look at the histories, I'm glad you brought that up too when you showed the charts and graphs because it's not something we're just talking about. When you see the history of that, it makes total sense because when when you get concerned about a recession possibly coming which i think we're already in one you know real estate does phenomenal during during recessions so it, it's the staple of building wealth it's always the number one wealth creation is mm-hmm. is real estate so. yeah i feel like real estate is what actually saves the economy in a mm-hmm. recession that's mm-hmm. always what kind of pulls pulls us out of a recession is the real estate market mm-hmm. um so again it's it's a it's a great time all the time uh, to in, invest and buy, um, but start saving now and start looking at different loan programs and mm-hmm. um, you know get with Greg and get with your your people who can help uh, figure out exactly what what that looks like. For me as a realtor, I'm seeing different loan programs also being mm-hmm. um, accepted. So you're sure. seeing VA offers being accepted and FHA offers mm-hmm. being accepted, which is wonderful for these buyers who yeah. thought that maybe they couldn't and they maybe gave up hope. Yeah. And they didn't even want to try anymore. Um, now is the time for those buyers who qualify for those loan programs or are using those loan programs to get back out there and get in contact with your realtor um, and start start looking again. Because I feel like right now is 
a great time for those buyers um, to to get in there. Oh, absolutely. I think right now, just like we you know spoke about earlier, if you wait, it's going to be a lot more competitive. Um, so yeah. you're going to have to get into it. Uh, get into it now, and, and like Aubrey said, you can always do something with the with the mortgage later on, yeah. you know, and and try to try to refinance it or try to redo it down the line, uh, if it makes sense. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but the whole point is get into the market so you can start you know building that wealth, and that 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 wealth creation is the number one wealth creation that's happened in this country by far. Amen. Um, and also right now, just a quick you know plug on that, but right now condo and um, townhome sales are are kind of like through the roof. So, I mean, they're, you're seeing a lot of condos and townhomes being um, eaten up in a matter of hours and days. So if you have a condo or a townhome and you've been on the fence about whether or not you want to list it, now is a great time because you're seeing them, um, you know, turn over very quickly. So now is a great time to um, to get in touch with your realtor. Let's get on the market um, and let's get some, some good money uh, for your home. Is there anything else you want to, to add to kind of sum up the no, market uh, in a flash? You know, definitely, you know, to talk, talk to the real, you know, talk to your realtor, talk to your lender, you know, make sure they explain stuff to you, not just, hey, here's the payment, here's the rate, then that's it. Make sure they understand what's going on with the market. Uh, so, so you can protect yourself and protect your family, not to you get in, into something. And, and, you know, on top of that, don't just get into something and then lose sleep at night and so forth. It's got to be right for you and your family. So take your time, uh, do your research, and, and then go from there. I'm so. glad you said that, too. Don't, don't jump the gum. It's okay yeah. to, to be patient. I have a closing after this, actually, and it's with a buyer who waited for over a year and a half to find the right home. And mm -hmm. she was patient, and she was diligent, and she did her research, and we, we took our time looking at the right ones. She looked at the market. She looked at the area and the neighborhood. She figured out exactly what she wanted to put some sweat equity into, and I'm really proud of her for being patient um, and for waiting to find exactly what was right. And she's buying. I mean, the rates were much lower, and it hasn't stopped her. Yeah. From when she started, it hasn't stopped her from finding the right one because she knew she was going to find the house yeah. when the time was right and she wasn't going to pass up on it. Yeah. So Yeah, um, no, th that's a great point, too. I mean, I could talk numbers and stats with you guys all day long, but if you're not at peace with that decision, then don't do it, you know? Yeah. But if you uh, really want to get into it but still trying to wait and so forth, you got to really understand, hey, this is probably a better time to get into it than, say, three months from now. So yeah, Absolutely. Um, and if you guys have any other questions about the market or – um, you know, the homes or real estate or lending, please reach out to us. Um, I am a realtor with Keller Williams Johnson City. I would love the opportunity to sit down and, and answer any questions that you might have, um, give you a, an estimate on, on your home's value. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have questions about lending. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, just feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to me at uh, gpeckman at rossmortgage.com. Uh, I'm working the Peckman team, obviously, and, you know, been with Ross Mortgage, too, as well. So, you know, anything, any questions about the market, about rates, about programs, I'm here for you. Yeah, so. we love what we do. Um, we love helping our clients. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing yes. it. Mm -hmm. um, so please give us a call. We'd love the opportunity to serve you. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching another episode of Selling Tri-Cities, where we are selling more than homes. Uh, stay tuned next week for another episode. <laughs> Absolutely. Bye-bye. <laughs>